Uh, well, I guess, Tony, for, for you, what, what sort of memories come back um, just coming into Wit Noble and especially given, given the fight back in 1989? I mean, what, what are your memories of that era? Um, look, I think um, I remember we had a rally um, in the pre season of sort of 1990, but yeah, 89, I, I wasn't playing senior, so I, I can't really recall any a game or any, of such, but it was probably um, knowing that the club was going to fold, and um, I remember having a last drinks at the social club which was obviously no longer here but and it was mainly made up of reserve grade players and maybe Doug Hawkins because uh, the, <laughs> the, the the club was going to merge with Fitzroy and some of the more senior players probably didn't want to you know have a last celebration drink type thing so um, so at that stage you thought it was, it was done the Footscray footy club was over yeah pretty much yeah we were told that um, the club was going to merge and then um, there was going to be Fitzroy uh, I don't know, I can't remember if it's sort of grey type sort of team, so um, yeah. Because you were a young player, <laughs> in that moment did you know how momentous it was or was it only looking back now you realised just how big it was to save a club like that? Yeah, probably looking back now, I mean I was I was just res playing reserves grade footy and I was a young 22 year old and um, didn't really understand the, the magnitude of it, so um, yeah it was quite amazing and really um, the people, obviously the, uh, the supporters, you know, I think they raised a million dollars and all had up yours Oakley stickers type thing and uh, <laughs> that was quite funny but um, I, I, as you said I didn't realise how, how much of a big of an impact that it had um, on the whole playing group and obviously the footy club and more so the community. Given, given oh. the impact that the side, uh, the club has had in, in, you know, in the last 30 years for you and your family, I mean, how much pleasure does it give you that it's still here? Oh it's uh, joyous, it's fantastic, I mean we won a premiership you know, 2016, it was amazing and to see the transformation and um, Obviously, good people running the football club, and my old coach Terry Wheeler, who was a great visionary, really passionate man. Um, uh, he he was our reserves coach in '89, and then when the club merged, oh, so was going to merge, um, there was a list out, and you know those reserve players weren't in that, so that's why we had that sort of drink. But '90, um, and then he and Peter Gordon probably you know, Peter was the one who probably um, got, got got the ball rolling, and Dennis Gallenberti, and you know some. I can't believe it's 30 years. I mean, I feel like an old man, which I probably am. But anyway, um, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. you guys uh, address the players today and um, you know share the memories and um, yeah, nah. make them appreciate so much playing for this club. Oh, I don't, I'm not sure about that. I mean, I think I mean there's obviously other people involved in who probably do all that sort of stuff. So uh, we're just custodians who sort of get through the doors, and you got the next generation of, of players like Tom and Mitch and Lockie Hunter and guys like that, and it's great to see. Guys who, uh, you know, sons of, of former players who, who uh, keep going on and, and represent this great footy club. Do you ask your dad about that time, the stories, and want to know the history? Um, yeah, certainly at the beginning. I think, um, you know, growing up in the environment I did, um, watching the You're the Dog documentary as well when I was maybe four or five, um, yeah, certainly loved um, quizzing dad about what was going on. And, um, how this footy club came about. So um, then further on, my knowledge grew just as you know, being here and through the culture and through the stories themselves. How's your fitness, Tom? Do you sneak your chance this week? Uh, yeah, so here we go. I'll train on uh, main session Thursday, so um, it's all going all right at the moment. So we'll just see how I go Thursday and how it pulls up from there. Have you, have you come back a bit quicker than you expected? Um, no, it's been as planned. So just yeah, it's four to five week injury. So um, yeah, it's all going. As planned. But your field's playing so well at the moment, you feel like you can come in and add another dimension to that? Yeah, hopefully. Um, hopefully I'll get about to get a game. So, um, <laughs> no, nah, the boys are playing really well at the moment. We've, um, yeah, we've certainly stepped up the pressure and um, certainly our effectiveness going forward and um, finishing front of goal has been, been uh, critical to our performance. Hard to compare seasons, does it feel at all like 2016, the way pace is gathering here? Um, no, you can't really compare, mate. It's a um, different group. Different atmosphere. We've um, grown a different different culture as well. We've um, you know got a younger team and uh, we're certainly just yeah, creating our own our own path. How's your role? I mean, you started in the middle and then you probably moved a bit forward. Is, is that where you see your role sort of starting on the half forward line and pinching in, in the middle? How, is that going to be once you come back? Uh, yeah, similar role. Just um, just share the time 50-50. We um, play good rotation to the midfield and um, blokes playing the midfield um, pinch it forward as well, and we just share the role to. Um, have an even performance across the team. And the boys, are they going to be wearing a special Guernsey on Sunday? Is that right? Yeah, we're in the uh, five-back Guernsey. So um, 
that'll uh, commemorate the, the time of 89 and um, yeah we'll all be yeah, wearing that to, to show how, how great the time was. Tony, just if I can get to just point one to you, yep. what do you make of a modern day footy? And the, I mean, it seems like over the last few weeks, especially the, the style of the game is, is sort of been a talking point and, and skill level in general. I mean, you were so you're a highly skilled player yourself. I mean, what, I do, what do you make? Skilled player. <laughs> <laughs> what, no, what do you what do you make of? I mean, has skill level dropped off? Has it gotten better, or has it stayed the same? And what do you make? Uh, of the probably the, the noticing is a low scoring and um, no no kicking to contests pretty much, and you sort of sort of how amazing how as soon as the, they get the ball and there's no one to kick it to they just go around the boundary line and it becomes quite um, stagnant a bit and sometimes it stops and it starts stop starts and then you've got other you know, other games that you see like maybe even Brisbane Lions they just play, get the game play on at all costs and go through the middle they probably sometimes I think they're a bit too scared to make mistakes and back themselves in and that's probably um, it's a little bit frustrating to watch um, but that's the thing I know the most is that the stop start in you know, getting the ball in hitting the boundary line as much as possible and um, it's almost like they don't want to make any errors but they don't want to take the game on it and it's doesn't look, it doesn't look good to watch sometimes. Mm. Tom, what would you make of that? I mean that's obviously someone who's outside the club now as a, as a current day player, does that ring true a little bit? Uh, no, probably not, that's why his coaching career didn't really pick up. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's, it's spot on, I mean there's, there's teams that, yeah, there's different types of ball movement different game styles throughout the year and I think you'll see as the year goes on people try and change their game style to, to suit whoever's on top and like, people try and replicate the previous year's premiership side um, so yeah it, it's quite an evolving game so you can't really put a specific type of game um, ball yeah. moving on, on it as a whole.